saints, it's good to see you all this Sunday morning, the second Sunday of Easter as we gather together to worship. Uh, I'm Pastor Matt from West Pres Joliet, and we're glad you're all with us. Uh, a couple of things to, to share this morning. Uh, our church session met this last week, our second time meeting by way of the, the Zoom format on the computer. And that's, uh, that's a neat experience, and we actually had a good hour or so meeting and, and got a lot of uh, uh, things done for us. Uh, look forward, members of the congregation, members and friends, look forward to uh, some communication in the mail later this week as we get that out to you. And then uh, uh, shortly after it gets in the mail, we'll also have uh, that up on the website for anybody to look at and see how we're planning for these weeks ahead. Uh, as we're in the uh, shelter in place time. Uh, friends, that's uh, really all we have for announcements, but we're glad you're here worshiping with us today. And Dale, we'll have our opening prayer. Good morning this first Sunday of Easter. Please pray with me for our gathering prayer. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing How Firm a Foundation, verses 1, 3, and 5. Peace be with you. 
And after, he, and after this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, then they are not forgiven. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails, and I put my hand onto his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief, but believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. And then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing, you will have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thanks be to God. And amen. Sunday of Easter, uh, uh, 
I can guarantee you that the gospel reading in the lectionary for the second Sunday of Easter, no matter what the lectionary year, is going to be John's 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. The story of Thomas. You guys all know Thomas, right? What do we call Thomas? Doubting, Doubting Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I, that's, he's got a bum rap. It really isn't fair. Because uh, we kind of, we almost put a negative connotation on Doubting Thomas. Nobody wants to be a Doubting Thomas. Well, shucks, I've been a Doubting Thomas most of my life. If you want to be honest, and, and when it comes to faith questions especially, I think a Doubting Faith can be an honest faith, and actually a, a healthy faith sometimes, because it means you're, you're paying attention to what's going on, and Thomas was paying attention. Thomas was not asking for anything more than what the other disciples had had experienced. He wasn't asking for anything special. He wasn't asking for more than anyone. He just wanted to see and experience what they had seen and experienced. And that's an important distinction there. I, I as I said, I've, I've had those times in my life where, where you just look at the world and, and experiences and things going on like, why God, how God? It doesn't mean you don't have faith. It doesn't mean you don't believe. It just means you have questions. It just means you're paying attention. Now, at the same time, there was something, something in the other disciples' experience, not negating from their experience at all, but somehow in their sharing with Thomas, they were not able to share the totality of their experience with Thomas. It wasn't enough for him to believe. Sometimes I wonder uh, how often might I be like one of the other disciples, that my confession, my witness to the experience of the risen Christ isn't enough for someone to believe. Now we can worry about these things ad nauseum, especially in times like this. As we're sheltering in place, we begin to think maybe too much sometimes and worry maybe too much sometimes. And this is where another, an, another part of this story that we read today from John's 20th chapter comes in. Uh, uh, twice Jesus appears uh, to the disciples that, that first Easter Sunday, later in that evening. They're all hiding for some reason, even though Peter and John have seen the empty tomb. Mary has shared her experience with the risen Christ. That wasn't enough. They were all hiding up in the upper room, scared, terrified. And Jesus appears and he says, peace be with you. And they share this with Thomas, and Thomas is still doubtful. He, Thomas is still having questions. And so it's a week later, even though they had the experience of the risen Christ a week earlier on Easter Sunday that evening, they're still hiding in the upper room, it appears at least. But Thomas is with them. Jesus appears. And again, Jesus says, peace be with you. Every time in the Gospels that we have a post-resurrection appearance of Christ, do not be afraid or peace be with you are, are part of, of Christ's greeting, part of, of Christ's welcoming to the disciples. Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. People are getting a little stir-crazy and excited, and, and some people are even complaining and and uh, saying they don't need to they don't need to shelter in place anymore, and they're they're protesting and all this stuff. They're being kind of selfish, if you ask me. None of us are are really having a great time with this sheltering. Oh well, I can think of a few. No, that's beside the point. <laughs> but <laughs> it's an inconvenience. But we're doing this for others. Uh, Quite frankly, I, I know some people, members of the congregation and, and other friends, family members of mine who are, who are first responders, who work in, in uh, health care uh, 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 employment. They're, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're, they're hospital employees and hospital staff, and they're overwhelmed, all these people. They're working really hard, and all they're asking us to do is just shelter at home for a while so that their job isn't as overwhelming. Can we do that? Can we 
have a little peace to be with us in this time. Hearing that word of Christ, peace be with you. Maybe that's the best way that we can share Christ with others now, is to share that peace of Christ. And let those essential workers do their necessary work to bring healing and recovery and restoration to us. And we'll, we'll get a start venturing out soon enough. And this is God's word to us today, my friends, to you and to me. Thanks be to God and amen. Let us now join together for our closing hymn, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright. This is the fifth week for us at Westminster practicing sheltering at home and social distancing. Even though many of our brothers and sisters in the working world are challenged with making ends meet. Some have lost their jobs due to businesses being closed, being laid off, hours cut. Even the investment market has tanked <laughs> along the way. And I guess you could say we should give thanks in all kinds of situations. And I'm wondering if people who lost money in the market could give thanks in the way that at least they had it to lose it? I don't know, that's kind of a crazy thing to think about. However, putting all of that aside, let us remember that the Apostle Paul had mentioned in his epistles that we are to give thanks for our many blessings regardless of our circumstances. And Jesus even calls us from the empty tomb to think about his gift to us for eter of eternal life, us being blessed to receive it and turning it around and how can we be a blessing to others. So at this time in our service, let's think about this. What would you ponder in your heart and in your minds and in your actions and in your daily life as to how to show the spirit of Jesus Christ with anyone you meet wherever you go? How would they be able to see you as an ambassador of Jesus Christ? And you know that leads to a feeling of generosity. You have been blessed to be a blessing, so how can you bless others? Our church certainly wishes to bless and continue to bless others. What we've done recently is to put together a great team of ladies with nimble fingers and sewing ability and making masks for people at the Our Lady of Angels home and at Joliet Hospice. And we also continue to support the mission of St. John's Food Pantry. Westminster is one of the largest contributing churches to feed the hungry in that location. So would you join us and take a look at our giving slide as to how you might be able to support and continue the life ministry and mission at Westminster. There's a slide that you can take a look at. And Peggy Robinson has also made a short video as to how to navigate the website. We understand that due to some persons not having a job at the moment, making ends meet, is a requirement to keep monies at home. However, there are some of us who can continue to support the work and mission and ministry at Westminster. So we encourage you to consider doing so. And when the economy returns, we welcome those who were 
able to sustain their families to consider making Westminster again part of their generosity. Let us give thanks and praise and let us continue with our offering of ourselves. Take our hands, take our minds, take our feet, take our mouths, take our hands and do the work of Christ. All this we ask in his name. Amen. For many, I, I know we've had a few of the members of our congregation uh, hospitalized in this last week, and I keep them uh, in our prayers uh, for for healing. Uh, not hospitalized, not for COVID nineteen reasons, but for uh, other reasons, and that's a, a, a particular challenge right now. Uh, we have, as I've said, in our congregation, we have first responders and other essential employees who are. Uh, putting themselves at risk to go to work every day, and so we keep them in our prayers. Those of you who are sheltering in place and maybe a little stir-crazy or have other real concerns and worries, we, we keep you in our prayers as well. Uh, all first responders and, and uh, uh, medical, medical professionals, those working in hospitals are in our prayers. We keep our diplomatic corps and our men and women in the armed forces who are deployed overseas um, continue in our prayers. They're facing also uh, added risk to their already uh, uh, risky jobs that, that work that they do on our behalf. Friends, let us come to God in humble prayer. Good and gracious God, Lord, we pray to you. We worship Together now in virtual reality, Lord, maybe disconnected physically from one another, but our spirits are present together now as we pray to you for your strength and for your guidance and your wisdom. Be, Lord, with our community, our congregation, and continue to help us feel your strength and prospering, Lord. Be with those in our membership that are having medical challenges and need your strength and your recovery and 
your compassion, Lord. Be with the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff that care for them, and especially all of those medical professionals, Lord, that are caring for those infected with the COVID-19 virus, with those uh, having to expose themselves daily. We pray for families, Lord, and for individuals stricken with this virus. May they have your strength and your sense of recovery and your wisdom, Lord. Give them your protective care. We pray, Lord, for our leaders, that they may be guided by your wisdom to seek what is best for all that we can soon find our way out of this time. We pray, Lord, for men and women in the armed forces, for those in our diplomatic corps, for those who are, are deployed overseas. May you keep them safe and sound, and may they return home to us whole, and so that we might be together again. We pray, Lord, for our community and for our country and for all of this world, now all sharing this common concern in the stress and the strain and the pain that it has caused. May we also, Lord, rejoice in that connection that this gives each and every person in your creation. We truly have so much in common, Lord. May we remember that and may we begin to look out of, well, the shadows in which we're, we're sheltering and, and see that we have common connections and concerns and cares between all of us, all of your children, Lord. Maybe if we can find that unity, maybe, Lord, if we can celebrate that connection, maybe, Lord, if we can come together, have your peace to be with us. We can celebrate you and the gift of your Son, our Savior. Maybe, Lord, this can find us as one finally, that we can build a world modeled by your creation, by your kingdom, by your gospel of love and compassion and healing for all of your creation and all of your created in it. This, Lord, we pray to you as the people of God in the name of Christ our Lord and our Savior who has taught us to be bold to say these words to you. Join me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Friends, let us go from this place in peace with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Thanks be to God, and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thanks, Dale, for that message about responding to God's love and continuing to support the missions and ministry of Westminster Presbyterian Church. As Dale mentioned, I will give you a little tutorial on our website of how to do online giving and find other information on ways to give. When you log into westpresjoliet.org, you will find an icon down at the bottom that says online giving with some hands. If you click on those hands, it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. From that page, you can create yourself a profile or you can still give without creating a profile and you can choose to do a one-time, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual gift. And from our website, you can also click on the tab that says Give. It has a word from the pastor and then a Give Online Now, which will take you to the same page that I just showed you. Once in a while, people say they have some trouble trying to give online. So we've listed a few of the items that might be causing the issue. And it has information on how to contact the Presbyterian Foundation if none of those troubleshooting steps work. When you hover over Give, you'll see something that says Ways to Give. And it talks about all the ways that you can give. Of course, it, I just showed you how to do the online giving links. You can also use your own financial institution's bill pay feature to automate a one-time or recurring gift. And the pay information needs to be filled out like this with a little memo. Make sure you indicate if it's general or a special offering. Of course, you can still write a check payable to Westminster. And even though you can't place it in the offering plate on Sunday, you can mail it in. Uh, to the church and we'll get it when we check the mail and there are other ways that are listed here and if you shop at Amazon if you go to smile.amazon.com and select Westminster Presbyterian Church as your charity of choice we get a little portion from Amazon from your purchases Again, we do thank you if you do choose to respond to God's love by supporting our missions and ministries of Westminster Presbyterian Church. Stay well and stay safe.